What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam and today I've got some planty related mail and I'm going to show you what I'm doing with it. So I don't know about you guys, but I just spent a month and a half, but well, uh, that's a lie. I went out shopping on Christmas Eve. So really I spent an entire month not buying things for myself, not to buy things for other people, but because I had guilt about needing to buy things for other people. And then I didn't buy things for other people until 24 hours before Christmas. But I digress. I decided to buy something for myself. Now I had a couple of Amazon gift cards. I got one as a gift, which was so cool. And then I had another one that I got from cashing in my Ibotta uh, points. I don't know if you guys do Ibotta, but it's like a, it's like a rebate app thing. It's, it's a whole thing. I decided to pick up a couple of things. Now I um, clearly have no more window space in my house, but what I do have is like a little greenhouse that has a lot of propagations in it. And then I have all these small little cuttings and plants that I just don't want to take up space in front of my windows for. So what I did after being offered about 900 different grow lights in my inbox from weird shady Chinese companies, I purchased myself one. <laughs> so hashtag not sponsored. So I picked up this LED grow light. Now this same grow light um, was, was offered from several different companies under several different names. But if you look at the components, they're all the same light. Um, so I went with the people who were offering it at the least amount of money. I believe it was $20 or so. I got this to clip on to my little Ikea greenhouse because I definitely need some additional light over there. And every time I put that greenhouse in front of a window, it basically acts like an oven, you know, like greenhouses do, and it fries all the plants inside of it. So I decided that we're gonna go with artificial light and see how that goes. Now I was gonna do some under cabinet lighting, but everything I could find was that purpley light, which I know is good for the plants, but um, it makes your house look like a strip club. So, you know, which might be your aesthetic and that's fine. I like to go for a distinctly not strip club aesthetic. So I have had this one shower curtain with a sloth stripping on a pole um, in my Amazon wish list for roughly 10 years now. So maybe it is my aesthetic. Maybe we'll put purple lights in the bathroom. Glad this is LEDs. We've got a clampy thing, which is just as difficult to open as all of I have the weakest hands, weakest. Like if I ever had to climb to save my own life, I'd probably just lay down and die. And then these bulbs are supposedly replaceable, which is one of the reasons that I picked this up. I know LEDs last for a long time, but it seemed like it was good to be able to replace them. So here's the little LED panel. It doesn't look as nicely balanced as my Hidden Harvest one, I'll just say that. Ugh. So this looks a lot like my old video editing, my old video light. There's a timer, looks pretty difficult to, to deal with. All right, stop it before you break it. Uh, oh, so you can turn the lights up and down. Looks like there's four settings. And then you can set the timer for three, six or 12 hours. Well, I guess we will see how this goes and I will make sure I update you guys so that you know how I feel about this in like a month or so. Usually it's about how long you can tell. I feel like with my other LED lights, I could see you know, positive growth coming on my plants within like a month, maybe five weeks tops. I'd say I saw it pretty quick with the Hidden Harvest ones, but I think that's a good fair assessment time. It also comes with the little pluggy thing, which I found a lot of these USB powered devices do not. And it's like, it, bro, do you think I just want to unplug my cell phone all the time? Like, hopefully this will solve some of my lighting and space issues and enable Oh goodness, this all is so cheap. I grabbed a couple of braided extension cords and I just got those, um, one for this guy because it's not going to be near an outlet in the kitchen. And then I just picked up an extra one because 
I feel like my grow lights are in constant need of extension. Super exciting. And then I have one more package I want to show you. I got this today. Super excited because I actually forgot about this again. My friend Sarah, who lives in Ohio, is very passionate about native plants, about um, planting outside for pollinators, and um, just generally having like that wild natural garden vibe going in her yard. And of course, that is what I'm trying to do with my yard this year. So she is a lovely human being and sent me a bunch of seeds and I'm so excited. This is so cool. I'm so pumped. Oh my God. Okay, first of all, she has the neatest handwriting ever. So we've got Swamp Milkweed, Golden Alexandria, some sunflowers. This is a native perennial. I thought that was weed. I was like, sweet. Uh, this is Lemon Bee Balm, Purple Horse Mint. Ooh, native reseeding annual. Purple Milkweed, Showy Goldenrod, a native perennial. I'm so excited. So here is some Butterfly Milkweed. This is World Milkweed, Wild Senna, Rudbeckia Mix, which is a native perennial. I love this in the old CD thing. This is Verbena, native wildflower mix. We have Joe Pie Weed, I've been looking for this. Blazing Star slash Gay Feather, native perennial. Gay Feather sounds fun. Uh, sneeze Weed, yes. Tithonia rotundifolia. So this is Mexican sunflowers. I do have some of these in the yard, but I would love to have more. Oh, here's a bunch of zinnias. Super exciting. These look like those little mini CD envelopes. Sarah, is that really? Did you import these from the 90s or are these actually seed packets? Obedient plant, native perennial. Blue mist flower, native perennial. Common milkweed, northern sea oats, and poke milkweed. This is so freaking cool, Sarah. Yes. <gasps> Something just spilled. No, what were you? So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna set up this little clippy grow light, and uh, then we'll let you go for the day. So this is where I have set up the grow lights. I've got them clipped right here onto the edge of my windowsill. And then I keep one inside of the greenhouse all the time. And then this one either sits in the greenhouse with the other one or over here on my cuttings, depending on what's going on. I've had this thing for probably, it's been about three weeks since I opened it and filmed that video. So I'm actually, seeing uh, so far that it seems to be helping my plants grow. Um, I'll pick you guys up and show you a little closer. Okay, so if we look in the greenhouse, you can see that since I stuck this light, since I stuck this light here, um, this little top leaf here has unfurled and started sticking out of the greenhouse. So doing all right there. And then right here looks like nothing, but this is actually you can see it's actually a very tiny begonia plant that is starting to sprout. The big leaf that it was sprouting from um, finally just died and shriveled away this week. So now we just have this little baby plant that is trying to survive all on its own. Here you can see I still haven't given up on the Monstera Peru leaf that Becca sent me. It still hasn't died, so I still haven't given up. I am determined to either see this leaf through till its untimely end or until it actually roots and makes a plant. One way or another, we're not giving up. I've got some peperomias that are rooting right there. And uh, yeah, so that's what's going on in the greenhouse right now. And then outside of the greenhouse, this is just sort of where I've been keeping some of my cuttings. Uh, this guy right here, my Calathea White Fusion, you can see that I did not give up on it and it has come back um, from basically dying all the way off. So that is pretty cool. So, you know, check your dying plants for little sprouts before you give up on them. Right here is just an Adansonii that really was not doing well. So I ended up cutting the top 
few nodes off and then just replanting them and um, trying to save them that way. And so far, so good. This was unfortunately an oven accident. Uh, Mike went to make something, didn't move the plants away from the oven, which they shouldn't have been there in the first place. So it's not his fault. It's my fault. Um, but yeah, it's still living despite that scalding. I've got some purple passion vine cuttings over here that probably should have went in soil a long time ago. Uh, just some extra coleus cuttings in a little spice jar of water. Um, I keep these going all winter long and I just keep cutting and rooting and cutting and rooting and eventually some will go outside and a lot will go to friends. And then here is my begonia propagation that also should probably go in soil now. I tend to do these straight into the dirt and they do fairly well, but for some reason this plant in my house is the one that everyone bumps into and knocks leaves off of. So I've just kept this propagation far away from the mother plant because I'm afraid that it will be my only one soon if people keep <laughs> knocking leaves off of the one I have. So here's your mini propagation slash plant hospital grow light update so yeah it's been a few weeks definitely very happy with these so far so thanks for watching the video today guys and i will catch you very soon in the next one